I have used the Wahoo Kicker Core for over a year now and ridden a few thousand miles on it, completed a 12 week training plan and done countless races. There is good and there is bad, but mainly good to be honest. When you are pushing the pedals casually through Watopia, Zwift's virtual world, then there is a chance the feet can wiggle loose over time. Once they are loose, the turbo trainer will be prone to wobbling, not what we want. Every now and again after a ride, I give each foot a little boot to make sure that they are on properly. When you are putting the trainer together, you will be trying to work out for ages which leg is the front and which leg is the back. Now, let me tell you, the longer leg goes at the front of the trainer, so the kicker core should look something like this. I am denied for ages over this, so hopefully this video will save someone some time somewhere. It is also correct on the box, so you can look at the box to see which way it should go. Swapping between rim brake and disc brake is really easy on the Wahoo Kicker Core. On the non-drive side, you can simply flip the adapter around. When there is more of the adapter sticking out, that is for disc brakes, just like this. And when there is less of the adapter sticking out, that is for a rim brake bike just like this. Now the only annoying thing about this is the adapter isn't screwed in. So when you put your bike in, it's easy to nudge the adapter or for it to wobble so you're not 100% sure if your bike is straight. Personally, I'd prefer this to be screwed in nice and tight like the Saris H3, for example. Because of this, I always check if my bike is level by looking from behind at the bike and the turbo trainer. That way I can eyeball it and see if the bike is straight. You will also feel if the bike isn't straight once you are on it. The slightest misalignment really is noticeable. No one wants to be riding like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. I've also had no issues with brake rubbing using my Giant Defy 2016 model disc brake bike. It seems that the kicker's smaller size and design makes it highly compatible with disc brake bikes. I don't see nearly as many complaints in comparison to something like the Tax Neo 2T, for example. The Wahoo website specifically states the design of the kicker core ensures clearance for flat mount and disc brake equipped bikes. Now, if you are unsure about compatibility, do check online to make sure that your bike is compatible with the turbo trainer you're using. Otherwise, you'll have an expensive chunk of metal. Now, when the legs are expanded on the kicker core, the trainer is officially in place, let's say. However, the legs don't actually lock in place. So if you move the trainer around, you can accidentally fold them up slightly without knowing. It is a minor really, but something that I've noticed over time when moving the trainer around. Similar to the plastic feet before, I give it a boot every now and again and just make sure that the legs are fully expanded before I go for a ride or race, etc. Now, when you move the trainer around, pull the back leg to move it backwards and pull the front leg to move it forward. That way you are naturally expanding the trainer whilst you move it. With eight, nine and 10 speed cassettes, you need this little 1.8 millimeter spacer that comes with the trainer in the box. It does, however, have a wavy appearance. Now I assume this is to vary the size of the spacer depending on how it's placed on the free hub. So when using a 10 speed cassette, make sure that the spacer is as far in as possible. You'll see what I mean if you push the washer inwards and rotate it on the free hub at the same time. If it's not all the way in, then it will be hard to get the final cog onto the free hub from your cassette and it will be even harder to get the locking nut on. Now, not all spaces are like this, but this is the exact one that came with my Wahoo Kicker Core, so I assume yours will be similar. As a Kicker Core has a flywheel, you need to calibrate the trainer every now and again. They say to calibrate your smart trainer if you move the trainer, or there is a difference in temperature day to day or every few weeks if you haven't calibrated it. Now it's worth noting that differences between hot and cold calibration as well, calibrating your trainer before you have ridden and the trainer is cold, doesn't account for the decrease in rolling resistance from the start of the ride when the equipment is cold. So in other words, before you calibrate your trainer, ride the smart trainer for a while, get it up to an operating temperature and then perform the calibration. From my experience, as long as you calibrate it every now and again, it's all good. I've never really seen a drastic difference depending on temperature, etc. Whilst riding, I've also had no issues with dropouts when using Ant Plus or Bluetooth. Honestly, this thing has a super stable connection. Well, at least my one does anyway. And that is a really, really positive point. I know it's only a sample size of one, and it's only over a year, but that's not a bad result. Now I tend to use Amp Plus mainly using the Cospo Amp Plus adapter for my Mac. I put the adapter close to the trainer as well, and that may help with connectivity. I do also use Bluetooth on my laptop, which has given me an equally stable connection. So all good on the connection front. They claim that the kicker core is completely silent, like most of the modern smart trainers these days. And I can confirm that it is pretty much silent. 
You will always hear your drive chain, but overall it's quiet. To be honest, if your turbo trainer is making a lot of noise, it is likely to be your gear alignment. So make sure that the bike is in the turbo trainer as straight as possible and also have the same cassette that you do on your wheel. One negative point, the Wahoo kicker doesn't measure your left and right power. The only turbo trainer that can do that is the Tax Neo 2T. I'm not sure why the kicker core or other turbo trainers can't measure your power. I'm not sure if they are only measuring from one side. Hopefully not, considering the price point when you compare a single-sided power meter to a smart turbo trainer. However, to many people, this will be irrelevant. I think it's a little bit of a negative that goes under the radar. After all, measuring your power is pretty much the bread and butter of a smart turbo trainer. It'd be nice to see each side individually, which will help you see if there is any imbalance in your pedal stroke. Now, I must say that I have had no issues with durability with the Wahoo Kicker Core over this year. I've really put it through its paces as well. I've done thousands of miles, over 50 races, and it has not skipped a beat once, to be honest. I have no creaking issues, no noises, no rubbing. My disc brakes have been fine as well. They're not rubbing. And the sensors have always given me a consistent reading. What more can you want, really? That's the bread and butter of the Smart Turbo Trainer. And mine has performed well over the year, as I've said. Now that I've said all this, I'll probably have loads of issues and it will collapse into a heap of expensive metal on my next ride. In terms of the ride feel, the kicker core is good, but it's not as realistic as those with bigger flywheels marginally, which is understandable given the smaller flywheel that the kicker core has. It is, however, still really good and feels good when riding virtually. The main difference I felt is with the spin up. So when you go uphill or when you're in erg mode, and the watts increase, the kicker core is more forgiving. The larger flywheels are less forgiving and you need to spin up early and be ready for the hill or the increase in power. Think of it like approaching a hill in the real world out on your bike. You need to prepare before you get to the hill or you will get caught out. The bigger the flywheel on your turbo trainer, the closer to the real world experience. The flywheel impacts inertia and how the ride feels. So you can see how having a bigger flywheel improves the realism. But if I'm totally honest, if you want a super realistic feel, you can always go for a ride. You are riding within the same four walls at the end of the day, so are you really looking for the most realistic feel? What matters more, in my opinion, is that the turbo trainer is consistent and reliable, which my kicker core is. And in my opinion, if you buy one or are looking to buy one, you won't be disappointed. Now, if you like this video, then do click the like button and help me out in the YouTube world. The more I grow, the more videos I'll be able to bring to you and gear I can purchase to bring you these neutral and honest reviews.